visuals. Oh, there we go. Another little burp. Uh, welcome back to the Wishing Guys Entertainment News Podcast with me and Chris. Our belly is full of chippy chips. I think chips do fuck you up, don't they? Yeah, they do. Especially chippy chips. They're all fat and fucking just the little knees cut the slices. Uh, but it is the Entertainment News. So we've got some cool things to talk about. Chris has finished one or two shows. He's not updated everything. But before we get crack a we need to do uh, our last little dance, Chris. Shimmy, shimmy. Our last little fucking dancey do. Venom, the last dance spoiler heavy review, uh, which we watched last uh, midnight release, wasn't it? It was. Midnight release for me, you and little Philip. Well, big Philip, I should say, not little Lizzie. Yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, so, uh, there's a spoiler free review one up, but it's been out for a week. We should be safe to spoil everything now. Uh, our next big film is Gladiator, so we'll be spoiling that whenever. But Chris, let's uh, give us everything you need to, everyone needs to think about, or your thoughts and feelings. About, about Eddie and Tom. Eddie and Tom. Eddie and Venom. <laughs> Eddie and fucking Tom. It was a good film. I enjoyed it. Else? I think it was better than the other two. Oh yeah, I think everyone, should, if they remember, Chris hasn't been massive on the Venom films. It was better than the other two. Um, I just kind of wish it was a bit longer. Yeah, in I certain agree scenes. Um... Started off okay. Obviously, got better as the film went on. Um, obviously, the the best part of the scene was obviously the the fights and stuff in, in the in the army base yeah, area fifty one. Final fight was sick. And it was, and uh, the little singer song along. Yeah. Ground control. Ground control. Venom was loving it. Eddie not so much. Yes. Which is a shame because he could have had a good sing song, but then he's just sort of like, I can't do this. Shut up. And then Venom's in the battle, growl, growl, growl. He's, he's on the tongue of his fucking life. He is for a whole film, to be fair. Yeah. Apart from when he's getting acid killed. Yeah. Which is nice. But but you liked it. I liked it. Yeah. Yes. It's, uh, I'm, what, I, I'm, I'm on the same level as you. Uh, I'm, I'm a bit more different from the start, though. From the start, I was completely straight into it, seeing how Eddie was going to get out of this mess down in Mexico. The scene where he frees dogs, I was like, God, on you, Tom Hardy, because he loves dogs anyway, freeing them fighting dogs from the horrible little bastards. Venom doing his shit, uh, working out that um, some fucking horrible little bastards are coming. Seeing Null, to be fair, right at the start was, was an absolute massive little, because I thought it was just going to be a nice little thing at the end, but seeing him start off the film, yeah. uh, being a horrible little bastard, that, well, he's amazing, but he's a horrible little bastard. Um, I had so much from this, it was it probably got me hard and heavy seeing the last little bit of symbiote strand come out as the venom's, the venom's being acid sprayed and saving Eddie and shit. And like finally getting at the end to New York City and seeing the Statue of Liberty and stuff. It's like, I won't forget your buddy. And you're like, oh my fucking God, this stop breaking my fucking heart. So we had Wild Robot made me cry. Venom's fucking starting to make me fucking feel horrible. Uh, I, Maroon 5, never really been a big fan. Never really cared for that song. Now I can't stop listening to it. But just seeing that montage. Here's to the one. Shut up, man. Mm. Making me feel so sad. Seeing loads of different symbiotes come up. Um, Toxin not really being Toxin, even though we, in the second one it was led up to be Toxin. I don't know why they did that. I don't know why that was some sort of creative decision. They're like, we're not going to do Toxin anymore. Which is a bit strange. Mm. Yeah. But, I mean, okay, so fair enough. Um... Girly from Ted Lasso, can't remember her name now. Getting they've it seemed to have changed a few of the names from the symbiotes. I don't know if this is a licensing thing, I don't know if it's a creative issue, I don't know what it is. But some of the, the symbiote there are still some work well on symbiotes that we see at the end, which is like I said, which is great to see a little symbiote team up, you know, fight together and whatnot. Um, but yeah, it was it was phenomenal. I laughed, I was nearly crying, seeing Mrs. Chen doing the last little dance and stuff together. Um, the goodbye to Venom because. We'll talk in the future of it in a sec. But yeah, I, I had so much for seeing the animal transition um, from, actually I can't remember if this is a bit you slowly nodded at, where it went into like fish and frog and all that. So yeah. well, that, seeing that transition was great. Seeing the horse stuff was great. Uh, uh, Tom Hardy just always being amazing, like he always figured it anyway. I, I had, for these Venom films, it's great because I always, we say it loads. For me, they're like the marvel popcorn, switch your brain off sort of film. Just watch the Soviet aliens, do some mad shit and go home. And that's all I'm there for. And I, I got all of that. And I got a lot of emotion with a fun little story. I, I, I had a good fucking time in my life. It was a good film. Was a good I, will, I will re-watch all three of them at some point. Yeah, it'd be a nice little trilogy. And not everybody's massive on them. <laughs> a lot of people are loving the new one. But some people are hit and miss with them and whatnot. I've just always had fun with them. It would have been nice, especially with Tom Hardy saying he, he, 
Uh, he would love to have worked with a spider, but he wanted to work with Tom Holland. I don't know what going forward the, the, the major plan is. Um, but yeah, we'll get to that in a sec. I'll quickly say for me, it's obviously a massive 10 out of 10. I, I can't complain. I love Venom. I had fun. That's all I want from life. So I'm going to give it an 8. Oh, a little nice or little. A soft, a soft 8. A soft 8. Like I started with it, yeah. Uh, but like I say, the fight scene's going to be a bit longer. The whole film going to be longer, which is definitely a downside. But I guess for the story they wanted to tell, it kind of makes sense. But I think it's just I wanted it to be longer because I, I wanted more, obviously, Sibby <laughs> action. I wanted more Venom action. Plus, I, I prefer a longer film. But yeah. look, back in the day, most films were like an hour and 20 and shit. Now when we get like a two-hour chunk and stuff, I'm like, nice. Yes. It, 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 it feels because it's been in the cinema for a fucking bit longer. Yes. But no, 10 out of 10 for me, 8 out of 10 for Chris. Uh, going forward then, what, what's your breakaway? Well, I don't really know because like, so for those who stopped back and seen the trailers, for those who have seen it and listening, um, we had a cut scene of a little beetle. Cockroach. Cockroach, sorry. Um, ingest the, 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 this little bit of symbiote left over from from him yeah because obviously like the first one there was no he's basically saying even though the um the codex is destroyed so i don't know how he's going to quite get free but he's still adamant he's like i'm going to destroy i'm going to wage war yeah, he gets sucked in because he was on verge of saying something but the light was still there or summer mm. so that's like what was keeping him out yeah, because obviously Noel needed the Codex. That's why he needed Venom and Eddie, because when Eddie died in the first one and Venom brought him back, they made a perfect symbiosis, and you only get a Codex with a perfect symbiosis. That's why he needed him. But now Venom, because what we this Venom from the trilogy is 110%, that Venom is dead. Yeah. That's, it's, yeah. But Venom's still kicking about. We'll get to the complicated bit in a sec. But that Venom is dead, so that Codex is now destroyed. So I don't know how Noel plans on getting out. But then, like Chris says... Is Ed is Eddie still a threat though? No, he he won't have the codex any part of it now because you need both for them. Right, okay. so, so he's all free. And <laughs> Eddie to can do. go off and do whatever the fuck Eddie wants to go and do. Right, okay. Which I'm imagining. Right, yes, that's the first cut scene. So the second one, I'm imagining this symbiote's going to try and find his way back to him because we all thought for ages that the little bit of symbiote left over was um, inside of the MCU. Hmm. But as this the film shows, it doesn't because. We wake up again, the boy, the, the uh, Mexican lad from, from Ted Lasso. We're in the bar where he's got his head down, which is inside of the MCU. Then the portal opens, blah, 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 for the no way home shit. Then he gets sucked through. And then at that, that bar, when he's leaving, that's when he leaves a bit of symbiote coming over. And that's when the, the army that come in and get that little vial, mm -hmm. which is the vial that breaks out and goes with the cockroach. And we know that the cockroach should survive because we, as we learn throughout the film, um, cockroaches can survive everything. And I'm assuming that cockroach is going to find its way to Edom, Edom. Eddie, or a spider. Because we don't have any confirmation of, is there a spider in this world? Which there should be, because we've got this guy. Mm -hmm. um, we don't know if it's going to be a new spider, uh, 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 whatever, because we're out the MCU now. Yeah. So fuck knows what's going to happen there. Yeah, they've kind of just left <coughs> this guy open. Yeah, but it's obviously going to come full, so like, going to have a conclusion, because we know a symbiote kickoff carnage is on the way, because Noel has said he's issued war. Yeah. Null is 110% on the way. And away. we have confirmed that we are getting a Null film or oh, series yeah. or whatever. What did we? A Null film? Did we not confirm something about Null? I'm not sure, sir. Neither am I. I no. know Null obviously will be back, but I don't no, know if you've no, seen this. No, now you've made me question it. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm sure you'll see it on one of your stories at some point in the coming weeks. I'm sure I will. You could correct us, sir. Um, so, yeah, there's one little bit of venom left over. Okay. As to where he's going and what it wants or where, what it's going to find, a Peter or an Eddie, fuck knows. Ideally, we want it to be, I want it to be a Peter. Because there's a cool fan theory kicking around online, which just sounds, oh, and it's all about Doomsday and shit and Spider-Man. Or oh, potentially Spider-Man 4, Spider-Man will die. And there's a famous scene of Spider-Man coming out the ground like, in his grave. Yeah. It's like, Spider-Man will die, but he'll come out of the ground. Whoa. And it'll be covered in symbiote, which will be, for look at the tingle starting, which will be so sick. Which well, will also mean there'll be a new codex formed. Yeah. And Null has always wanted, like, a spider shit. Spider-Man was always destined to be the, the man in black at the end of time. Yeah. The future eventual well, we know there's another Spider-Man coming. Yeah. Um, which is going to start filming until next year. So that could possibly tie into something? Yeah. 
But obviously, if it's Tom uh, Holland, that's still in the MCU. Yeah. So <laughs> we still have a little bit of a mess to clean up. Of we do. Where we're actually going and whatnot. But we know they can go back and forward and shit. And plus, if it's Spider, we, do, we know we have the Spider-Verse. So there's ways around it. Yes. So we can do whatever. Uh, but yeah, so that's going forward. Cleared up and shenanigans. We both really enjoyed it. Me a little bit more than Chris, but I'm really hard to displease, to be fair. Um, but yeah, that's, so that is uh, Venom, The Last Dance. Venom, The Last Dance. Yeah. So it could potentially be The Last Dance for Tom Hardy and Eddie Brock, but it's not going to be The Last Dance for, for Venom. No. In some way, shape or form. Right. Um, yeah, so do you want to catch up with your TV shows, sir? The ones that you have done and recapped? Finally got round to finishing off. Floor of the Rings. Ah, yes, Rings of Power. Rings of Power. Yeah, because about three weeks ago, you give us a, hmm, and I've had to sit and wait on that three weeks of, what a, okay, bad, good, what? So go on, give us all your thoughts on Rings of Power, sir. <coughs> In whole, it was a lot better than season one. Mm-hmm. Um, fight scene was brilliant. The Battle of Eregion. The Battle of Eregion. Yep. That was good. I enjoyed that battle. It was so long as well. It was so long. Um, Shut up, boiler. Somebody's ran hot water upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> Production value. Joe Rogan the other day was doing his uh, podcast, and as the mics cut out, you could see him stressing, getting worried. Like, I'm thinking, Should, you want to do around here, Joe, mate, because <laughs> we've got all kinds of interference happening here, mate. We do indeed. Yeah. Um, so, right. Going forward. Yes. Just quickly, with these four on top of the rock. Yeah. Yeah. Is that the start of the Lord of the Rings trilogy? No, because obviously Sauron needs to be dead. The start of the Lord of the Rings trilogy, Sauron gets killed by a sealed... Well, sorry, yeah, Elendil fights him and then the sealed or cuts his hand off. Right, okay. Yeah. Okay. At least still alive. Yeah. Sauron. Sauron is still going to um, fight in the end. Yeah. What was your negative? Because you, you, you seemed very negative when you when I asked I you. I didn't have a negative. Oh, I, you I were like, was just... Hmm. I was like, oh. Uh, oh. I was just keeping you suspense. Oh, I was fucking three weeks. Fucking bastard. Keeping um, suspense. But you enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot more in season one. Yeah. Yes. Yes. How fuck it... Oh, see the bit where... Um, oh, shit, I can't his name now. Then he's ch- uh, charging towards a Balrog and he says the story back and he goes, uh, it, I wasn't letting you lift lift my arm with it. You, you were doing that yourself, getting stronger. And then he charges the Balrog. He's like, oh, you, why are you breaking my arm? Is that the big dude? The dwarf, yeah. It's in, um, in Moria. <laughs> yeah. Where did the devil just call the sun appear from? The Balrog. Hmm. It's the devil. You know the Balrog. You remember the fellowship. That's the Balrog that would eventually, you shall not pass. That's that. We saw it at the end of season one because it's been sleeping at the depths of Moria. Yeah. It's been down there undisturbed, but the dwarves dug too far and too greedily. Yeah. I feel like you need to rewatch the trilogy, Chris. I think I need to rewatch it. <laughs> you need to rewatch it. I'm always happy for another rewatch. Uh, it's a shame because you could have come and done the extended with us on the Sundays, but obviously Sunday's Chris's day, so I don't, I never like interrupted on Chris's day. But yeah, so the barrel has been down there for fucking. Because there was 12 Balrog created by Morgoth, who was like, you know. Thinking, yeah. And then most of them, they all sort of died out. But that, that one there just went down to the bottom depths of Moria and slumbered. But then the dwarves woke him up. So he's been set. End of season one, you see him waking up. And now he's been slowly waking his way back up. Uh-huh. And then now they, they see it and it obviously gets caved in. Because eventually that Balrog and shit is just going to destroy and obliterate all of Moria. That's how we see it in the Fellowship, all fucked up and ruining. Right. Chris can't remember any of this guy. No. <laughs> <laughs> so it didn't just randomly appear. Okay. Yeah. Do you not remember seeing it at the end of season one? I don't know. No, it's literally, I think I'm fairly well, confident it's the move. final shot. Of it's the rocks move, maybe. Yeah. No, no, he sees his face. Oh, do you? Yeah, you see like a and he wakes up, and gives a scream, and then the show ends. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it'll, but one day it will come back to you you'll be sat there in the middle of nowhere like in so, 10 years time so King Dwarf yeah he obviously is deed he deed he deed Balrog the Balrog the Balrog yeah what's the crack with him now then is he still there or is he on his way out so he'll be making his way more into Moria to try and obviously because we see the big 
we see the mithril yeah, we see, get revealed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he'll eventually work his way out and start to bring down... We just see a big bright light when he karate chopped the dwarf. Yeah, obviously then... he'll be just obliterated. <laughs> He's not going to do much against that Balrog, unfortunately. No. Indeed. Yes. Um, so yeah, he'll, he'll just... So that, that throughout season three, we'll see the dwarfs dealing with that issue of the Balrog, which we know the outcome of it, but... We'll see that. Plus, there's their own issues happening because there's going to be some dwarf politics about you should people shouldn't think you should be king and all that stuff. Right. Um, we see Elendil come from Numenor, which will be the first time he steps foot in Middle Earth, um, holding the, the flame of the West Aragorn sword that he eventually goes on to get the one that cuts Sauron's hand off, which is just and he even revealed it the same as it was like you are a sexy great 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 granddad. I want to show. I want to shag you, ancestor. Now I want to shag you. The way you. So we'll see the the first settlements of like the Numenorians coming over to Middle Earth and like creating like Gondor and stuff like that. Okay, he ain't got a fucking clue visuals. <laughs> He's looking at me going, He's speaking Klingon here. <laughs> Not a fucking clue. Um, I might have to read the books. <laughs> yeah. You should definitely. It's fun listening to Andy Serkis do them on Audible, like as well. Yeah. It's, it's, it's I, might, fun. I might have to. Uh, whereas we get we get to see Gandalf officially revealed. Young Gandalf. Yeah, oh, yes. yeah, very, very young. But that's yes. his... Because obviously, when I first watched it, I thought, is it Gandalf? Because I feel like that's too on the nose. But the whole time, I think everyone was thinking, it's probably Gandalf. But I was like, yeah, it's probably Gandalf. But that's too obvious. Like, if they're like, it really is Saruman, or it's one of the blue wizards. But they went with Gandalf, and I was, to be fair, I was quite happy. I was, yeah, I will happily take this much younger Gandalf going away. And then I'm assuming as well where the uh, Halffoots went... And they started, they sealed that map and shit. I'm assuming that's their way of going to eventually settle and make the Shire and shit, which is fucking awesome and badass. Seeing Sauron, they, they kill um, uh, Adar. That was mm-hmm. horrible watch because I kind of sympathise with Adar, but he went, he did go a little bit over the top and stuff like that. Um, but seeing Adar eventually die, um, okay, Sauron doing his shit. The fight he had with Gladriel at the end, he was changing the Hellbrand and that. Oh my God, I just thought... I love you. If there is not a, an award nomination for, I can't mind his name, the lad that played Sauron or, or Keller Brimbor, I would be heartbroken. Them two were f- fucking some of the best acting and performances I've seen in the past few years. It was phenomenal, the shit they were doing. It was absolutely fucking amazing. It was, it was just the, the manipulation tactics of Sauron and shit. And, the, and, the, and at the end, it's quite cool as well because Keller Brimbor is sat shooting him with the arrows. Yeah. And then in the books, Sauron uses Keller Brimbor's body and waves it on like a big banner. So we're, we're like a couple of shots away from maybe seeing that. I don't know if they'll go the full extent, yeah. but we have Keller Brimbor with the arrows and stuff in him. But they were just like, when he's like, oh, what's going on out there? There's a massive siege happening. He opens the doors and Sauron's trickery is, and he's like, oh, this fuck all happened. I'll carry on making his rings. And the way Sauron was just to see him, we need nine rings. Where are my rings for men? And she's like, Oh, so I'm assuming we'll eventually see the Nazgul being formed, the Nine Kings of Men. Oh, that's so fucking good, man. It's so unbelievably good. <laughs> it's just, you like, oh, every episode is like, oh. I won't, literally, I've done again the season two already. Have you? It's only finished like for a few. Yeah, I, I, it's like when, well, a couple of times when an episode was out, I'd watch it here and then I'd maybe go and watch it at Laura's or whatever. And I'd, like a day later, I'd just watch it again. Just because it would just make them all. You know when you finish a show, like From does it with me all the time, and every time an episode ends, you're like, your mouth's watering, like, I need some more of that, I need, I need some more. It's like eating a Burger King, but not getting the last bite. It's just like, I want, I want the last bite. That's what I was getting every single time. Fucking loved it so much. Yeah, yeah. But for me, personally, everyone knows my thoughts and opinions, train out of 10, but what is your overall season, your favourite performance, or your favourite character, or your, just your, whatever. Or your downsides. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> <laughs> this is our job, Chris. It took me long enough to watch this. Yes. You know, you've been busy. I have been busy, to be fair. Um, well, I think the highlight moment has got, obviously got to be the battle. Yeah. The battle was cool. Um, I think the downside to it, I think I was... Sometimes I was getting lost with myself because I think there was that many stories getting put into war yeah, that, that's a valid ag- argument and we will jump into the the, 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 the half foot yeah and then we will jump into someone else yeah, and dwarves, someone else it, and Sarah someone else Galadria. no I, I get that <laughs> argument so I get that yeah but I'm going to give it an, I'm going to give it an 8 another 8 um yeah I need to remember shit more don't I 
<laughs> we can't help it, mate. It's just not how your mind works. I don't think you can reset your mind. And there's a lot to think about when it comes to Lord of the Rings if you want to remember it all. Plus, if it's not something you adore and you don't invest loads of your time in, it's, it, it doesn't mean in the fucking another year you can't just think, fuck it, let's do the first two seasons again and let's put the trilogy on. And then you'd be like, oh, okay, yes, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. You could easily go back and do that. You remember for the most part. Vaguely. Vaguely. Uh, so, but yes, right. So, eight from Chris. He's finally got it done. Um, he's not up to date with the Penguin, but we won't say, so we won't say much on that. Uh, you're not up to date with From. No. I will say last episode, amazing, beautiful. I just can't wait for more. I speak to the lad at work, right? And I think the perfect number of, of seasons for this, for me, I'm going to say is five. I think we should have two more after this. Do you think? I don't, well, I don't want to go down the Lost route. Lost was phenomenal for the first three seasons. And then obviously this is the producers and then it just like fell off a cliff. They were like... They were like 11 seasons or something. Like that. No, there was only six of them. Was there? Yeah, I've got the box set down there. It's, I fucking, from the first three it Lost, I was like, oh my God, this is groundbreaking. I could, I could never get into Lost. Loads of people said that. Loads of people. But amazing. But yeah, because of the story we, we want to tell from From, because at the minute, it's especially season three, it's got like a, a lot more people on the edge yeah. of the seats. Mm. There's only so much you could do because the objective is to get out of the town. Yeah. So once we figure out the mystery, once we get out, that's it done. Yes. If this is like 12 seasons... Of they're still figuring oh, the, the monsters doing this. That's going to be far too much. Yeah. I feel like this is this is, maybe six at a push, but for me, I think the ideal number is five, and we can have our conclusions. And well, shit. We, both, well, we both know. Well, going to my last episode. I don't know about you. We're going to my last episode. Yeah, you're one behind. You're only one behind, aren't you? I think so. Yeah, seasons. Oh. I'm waiting for episode seven. I'm waiting for eight. I don't know. I'm on seven or eight. I don't know what I'm on. I'm up to date. Well, we know that they can't just wander through the tree and expect to escape. No. Because you end up in a pool of bricks. Yeah. <laughs> but, which is sad because, uh, sorry to interrupt you, Chris. Um, lastly, that runs Colony House. In real life, that's her husband. Okay. Yeah, which is quite... Donna. Uh, that's a, um, his, his name's Dale. Um, it's quite a... I didn't know that because yeah. I like watching the, the behind the scenes interviews and yeah. shit and I was like mm, a bit sad but yeah, sorry carry on um, what was I saying yeah we know you can't escape just then that's it um, I'm interested in how she the, the, the mother managed to get out Tabitha Tabitha mm -hmm. but obviously she had the, the, the wisdom child to guide her. Victor. Oh, you mean the, the, the boy in white? boy in white, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. There's, um, if you look at some of Victor's pictures and whatnot, this isn't confirmed by anyone, this is my guess. You'll see some of the uh, faraway trees and he's got arrows and signifiers and indicators and I'm assuming he roughly and vaguely knows who can go or what because obviously he told Tabitha it was safe to go down her one. Yes. Her lassie, he told her to go and hide down one once before. So I feel like Victor, if he steps up and says a bit more, he could save a lot more people. But he does delete shit from his head because of memories and it's painful. Well, he's been there a long time, hasn't he? Yeah. Which is why I think, um, I, I'm still in the, 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 the belief that this is a cycle thing. So every, because if you, if you think about um, the monsters that come out, they're all in like period, not period, but like pizza, like Milkman's very 50s, 60s, you've yeah. got the woman's very 50s, 60s, um, and all that kind of shit. Do you think it's all in Victor's head then? No, I don't think it's in his head. Uh, I think it's all really playing out in whatever pocket universe thing we're in. Uh, but I just think because every cycle, so we know that Tabitha has visions like Victor's mum, the last generation. We know that um, Jade, who's my favourite character by far, and um, boy then Jade, fucking love Jade he's getting the visions like the guy who had the doll can't remember his name now um, and there's people that just keep like patterning other people and it feels like every cycle we know at the start of Victor's cycle there was a mass murder mm -hmm. and then more and more people come in like the time he's in season one two cars that's not happened in a, in a long time and shit like that um, and I, like I said and the, the numbers like being one and then the same again at the end of this and it just feel like it's this, it's a cycle right, yeah. and I feel like Ethan will be the new Victor of this new cycle um, tab of his little boy mm -hmm. because he's started to do shit like that. That's what I'm going. I, I could be completely wrong. Um, it feels like uh, 
it feels like there's a, a massive grand design. Like Tabitha was only let out because I feel like Fromville let her out because it felt like it needed to bring Victor's dad in for whatever fucking reason. If it, it didn't feel like it was a coincidence, she ended up in the hospital that she ended up in, you know, seeing the people that she saw and whatnot. So I feel like there was definitely um, a, a plan there to get her out. The the, the Unkui kids. I feel like they're good, but I'm still not sure. The Komodo girl is a fucking pain in the ass because she seems like she wants to help, but I'm like, why are you doing it in such a fucking freaky way? The reveal we got in last episode about uh, Fatima. Fuck, you'll see that. Um, I'm going to get goosebumps. Boyd, once again, just like Rings of Power, if he doesn't get a nomination, he's, if, you notice he's a Boyd. if you notice the details in his acting, right... Uh, so when he's kicking off and they see Dale go through the wall, you saw that, didn't you? Yeah. And there's little mannerisms he do. He goes, see, look what I told you. Look what it... And he stopped and there's like a stumble and you can see him fight something within. It's little details that like, he's put into his performance. I'm like, you, you're fucking brilliant. Yes, and he was great and lost as well. Um, so I'm glad that the people are lost. But we'll bring him back because he was fucking phenomenal and lost. And so, yeah, I feel like we're doing this whole cycles thing. There's a lot of weird shit happening. James just amazing. There was a little... Oh, I can't remember if this is the last episode I watched or the episode you watched. Did you see him speak to the bartender? The ghost that he always gets visited by. Last time I seen him, uh, he was in church. Right, now, so I won't say too much on there because he said something which stuck with me and I'm thinking, why have you worded that like that? It's fucking brilliant as well because I sit and after every episode I sit and I just go through loads of fucking stuff and I'm like okay what's happening because there's so many little details but it's great because you can go onto YouTube and there's, there's people much smarter than me that have broke down their own thoughts and processes loads of theories out there fuck knows which one's going to be right but the show's just brilliant it is a, it is a brilliant series to be fair I'm enjoying it yeah it's so fucking enjoying it the, the monsters that was one of the scariest scenes we've had in the entire series what the fuck are you doing you're a spider or something if there is, it, he's at it. <laughs> Was um, when one of the monsters give Boyd the keys to the ambulance, that fucking terrified me. Because she just, yeah, you got these, it's fine. We're, we're keeping um, thingy, but yeah, you can have these. And even Boyd's like leaning back thinking, and he even says, didn't he? Like, gets annoyed, goes, fuck off or some shit. Oh, it's fucking... I wonder why they won't harm Boyd, though. I think it's because they know he's the leader and that, that he's the one. That's inspiring hope, and, I, and my my thought is they're just trying to drive him this this figure of leadership, and I hopefully hope they're going to dr drive that to madness because if he crumbles, a lot of other people will crumble. Mm. I'm assuming that's what it is because if I know if I was in that place and the monsters have all of a sudden been like, we're going to make sure you watch Mrs. Uh, Chow or whatever she's called die. Oh, we're going to give you keys and shit, and it's just going to completely fuck with him because yeah. he's already in a weird place anyway. So uh, it is good. It's phenomenal. Uh, but he's got one more episode, so hopefully he'll be up to date ish. Maybe next time he's rather yours. Not Penguin. Uh, and then, without spoiling, because Chris hasn't said it yet, Agatha is. <sighs> I have never been so surprised in for ages with a show. This was fucking outstanding. I can't. The witches. Just a bunch of little Halloween witch fun. <laughs> like, you know, the Moon Knights and the Falcon and the Winter Soldiers, you expect to be like the best, best, best. Which for me, they still are. Yeah. But Agatha falling not far behind, I'm like, oh my fucking God. Because when it got announced, I was like, all right, cool, yeah, we'll, we'll watch that. It'll be a little bit fun. But no, oh my God, and especially with this final part two episode, I think it's Jesus Christ. Jesus, Mary and Joseph. Yeah, which we'll break it down next week when Chris is done and both. Yes. I'll do on Sunday. And then there was also, just because we're speaking about Marvel, uh, did you see oh. the mini trailer for the Up Next on Marvel? And they showed like little snippets from the next projects, like Born Again, the animated Spider-Man show. No, oh, that's, oh, it, was a, it was a brilliant trailer. You'll have to watch it. Oh, Just okay. giving you like what's coming for like, the next few years. Okay. Uh, oh, it's so good. But yes, I think that's round up. Have, you, have you done any films or anything? No. No. Um, I need to though. <coughs> I don't get, like, like I said, I don't get a chance to watch much through the week. Um, Just do what I do, sacrifice sleep. <laughs> I don't want to say it. it's, it's retarded. If I it? wasn't driving for a living, I would. No, oh, yeah, you should be um, being safe. Yeah, I quite yeah. often think that because like sometimes I'll I'll watch some shit. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna be at work in three hours. So I'm just about to finish this film. Then I'll be at work and I'll be on the digger or some shit, and I'll have a quick moment of, oh fuck, I need to concentrate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I don't get the attention much through the week after work. It's time I get in, food, showered. It's about eight nine o'clock depending on what time I get in. And it's like, right, relax. Bed, 
Big Bang on then and just relax. It's always Big Bang. <laughs> yeah, comfort shows. Everybody has them, mate. Yeah. Everybody has comfort shows. Yeah. Well, I don't think there's there's a fuck ton you need to get caught up on. Um, uh, there's nothing I need to... Everything I'm doing now, apart from weekly shows, is just repeats yeah. or shit like that. Dragon Ball Dimer every Friday on Netflix. Um, I haven't even got a chance to catch up on my program, my own programs, like NCIS and all that stuff and SWAT. It'd be quite nice in a weird way, though, because like, you, you get a nice little binge of shit. Yeah, like say... Like, I, I've only got two more weeks of Fridays left, so two more full weeks, and then I'm on four day weeks for oh. all the way up till Christmas, yeah, off for two yeah. weeks over New Year's Christmas. So, I have time to catch up on shit. Yeah, I'll smash it off then. Yes. What can news and news do you have then, sir? Not a lot. Like, yeah. it's been quiet. Well, we've, to be fair, we've. Ra- Where's the new clock on the new phone? We've rambled for half an hour anyway, so. It's been, it's been, it's been a quiet week. Um, as Chris uh, finds where I'm at. I don't think you have any news I could check. Oh, you probably already have it. My only big news is the first look at Spider Noir. They took pictures from the set. No, come um, on. Yeah, well, it's, it's it's not any information on it. It's just how he looks, how Nicolas Cage looks in the uh, in the live action outfit. Yeah, got it. Yeah, look fucking brilliant. It literally is the comic book, and somebody's went Droom! live action. Droom! It's fucking outstanding. It looks Beautiful. brilliant. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, we have a release date for FNAF. Oh. Two. Yes. It's going to be now at theatres on the 5th of December next year. Was it Christmas last year? It was around Christmas time, right? Yeah, it was, de- it, it was definitely a... It was around Christmas time. Was it not this time last year? Was it not Halloween? I can't remember the exact, but it was right. It was. You're, you're right. It was the back end of the year. Hundred percent. Yeah. Hundred percent. But so, basically, just over a year, we'll get FNAF two. Yes. Because you enjoyed that as well, didn't you? I did. I did, I did indeed. Uh, we also got another reveal date, which is the fourth of March next year. Yes. That's when we will get to see the boy in red, Daredevil. I was thinking, who the fuck's the boy up the boy in red? Daredevil. Daredevil. Yeah, which I can't wait for this. Never gonna. You get a couple of snippets of him speaking to Wilson Fisk in that little Marvel trailer. Nice. Yeah, which is cool. Nice. Um, Alien Romulus. Rom, rom, oh. Romulus. Romulus. That's Going back, bro. Yeah. Uh, we are getting a sequel to that one. Nice. And the lead girl... And the robot guy. Yeah. Them two are going to be back. And what was there? Was it Adam? Was it Adam? Something like that. He he was, he's, when we do our end of year list, he's on my list for the top performances. <laughs> he was great. He was good. He was so fucking good. He was good. Um, 2027 is set for the next installment of Plant of the Apes. Oh, okay. Yes. So we're going to continue with this new lot that we just got. Yes. Oh, sweet. Oh, yeah, suppose, yeah, because that one ended, uh, it shows you the humans getting her back to the base, and they still had control of, they regained control of the satellites and yes. stuff, yeah. Yes, yes. They did indeed. Um, I haven't got a date yet, but I guess I reckon it's going to be soon. Uh, Deadpool will be returning for some more Christmas specials. He's going to do Christmas specials? Yes. Even better, that's the, right up his street, isn't it? Doing some stupid we'll silly little Lord last year, we're getting some more fish. Yeah, yeah we had, was it Was it last year, Guardians? Was it last year? I can't remember. Oh, that was really fun. Getting Kevin Bacon and fucking yeah. doing some shit. Did you... There. Um... Gen B season two is coming out next year. We nice. haven't got an exact date yet, Fucking but it will be out next year. And then the year after, twenty twenty six, will be the final season of The Boys. Yeah, there's only one more, isn't there? There's only one more. And obviously, we'll have a. S- Did we say there was going to be a spin off? Yes, um, your your main man uh, Jensen Eccles, Jensen yeah. Eccles, uh, doing a Soldier Boy and uh, Stormfront. I think what, what year was it? It feels like it was the eighties or some shit. They're doing. Some sort of thingy. Nice. Or was it? Oh no, maybe, maybe it was the forties. It, it's a good few years before, and yes, 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 yes. yes, yes, yes. Um, the Wayne Brothers uh, teaming up once yes. again for another scary movie. Yeah, back. 
They have fuckers. They, obviously, have they did one and two, and then for whatever reason, I don't know if it was a studio or whatever, they fell out. And it was the Wayne Brothers that made Scream Scary Movie 1 and 2 just fucking amazing. That's why the rest of the scary movies kind of fall off a cliff. So when I got this news, oh, yep. Lovely. Love the lily, 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 lily. We haven't got an exact date yet, but it's been confirmed. And it'll be next year. We are getting season three. Was it four? I can't remember. I think it's three. Oh. Alice in Borderland. Uh, it's set over in Japan, and they've got to play games. And if you lose the game, you get killed off. Oh, I got right into it. I got proper into it. I, I enjoyed them. Are you fully up to date then? Oh yeah, yeah. So these came out. The season two came out like last year. Oh, and that. we thought that that was it. And then, oh, the, the, and then they announced that season three is coming. Oh, well, that's a nice one because I haven't done them. Yeah, good. Recommend. Obviously, you have to read the subtitles. But oh, I don't mind. Yeah, good. Don't mind that. Um, quickly off my head, talking about subtitles, I know we are getting a train to Bruges. I think you've, have you watched them? Where the zombies and the and the oh, Asians. Yes. Um, uh, oh fuck you, prick, wanker, shit! I know exactly what you're about. We're getting another instalment of that. Yeah. I'm aware. Um, I do know. I enjoyed them as well. Yeah. I enjoyed them ones. No, you're absolutely fucking, you're fucking sick. Fuck! Oh, I'll come to us in a fucking long time, won't it? Probably. Do, 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 do. Where am I at? Where am I at? Where am I at? Where am I at? Um, season three of What If starts on the 22nd of December. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking been loving the what ifs. Yeah. Um, don't know how I feel about this one. Oh, oh. Uh, Warner Brothers. Mm. Uh in early development of making a movie. Yes. Game of Thrones. <sighs> well, I I'm probably the wrong person to really give a view on that. I guess it all depends on when it's set and who it's about. Mm. I, I feel like if it's, if it's follow-on stuff, I feel like that's going to be more criticised. But if it's stuff that George R. R. Martin's up to date with in book-wise, I feel like fans would be fine with that. And I don't know. No, no do I. Is that the wrong person to... The best person oh. is obviously my my better half. Um, she would say, this would make a great story. This this bit here or that bit. Yeah. So I'll, I can inform you next week what her take. Yeah, on I, need, I need Laura's intake on this one. Yeah, I'll ask her when I see her on Sunday. And finally, last but not least, last but not least, um, we are getting another Alien and Bees Predator movie. Sweet, that, that they've always been fun. And Ridley Scott has, as announced, he is currently developing another Alien film. Sweet. Well, really, Scott produced Romulus, didn't he? Obviously, yes. he, we know he's the OG director of number one. Yes. Um, and then James Cameron was number two. I can't remember the rest. It's mad how you think how he started off in Cheers. Was it Cheers? Yeah. No. Pons. Was it Cheers? Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Who? who, who? Really, Scott. What, he directed that? No, he was in it. Oh, well, who did he play? He was a ninja dude. Who's the ginger dude? He was the ginger dude. I literally can't picture it now. No, cheers was the bar was the was the bar thingy. No, that's that's cheers. Cheers is the bar. Yeah. Thing. So yes, yeah, so which is the fun show? This is the fun show. What's that? What was that called? Hey. I can't remember now. Hey. I can't remember what that was called. But he played um. Somebody on that. Uh, where from? Where the fuck's it? Happy Days. Happy Days. That was it, right. right so right. who did Ridley Scott play on Happy Days? And not that, don't get wrong, I've never watched it, I just know who the Fonz is. Happy Days. Cast, 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 cast. Oh no, sorry, sorry, I'm thinking of Ron Howard. 
what I was going to say. Because he's really Scots English, isn't he? It'd be a bit of a weird thing for him to, to be. But I didn't know, so I thought maybe maybe he fucking he was. I'm thinking Ron. Ah. Yeah. Oh, well. Just to confirm, visuals, Ridley Scott is not in... Uh, no, he's not. In Happy Days. And Harry Winkler <laughs> played Fonz. Yeah, I, I, I know he played Fonz, even mm. because he... To be fair, I, without the hair colour, I just genuinely don't think he's aged. No. Yeah. All it is is the fucking hair colour. He's gone from, like, quite jet black to... White. White. Yeah. <laughs> but he's still got the same face and everything. Yeah. Which is fucking nuts. But is that your final story then, sir? Yes. Lovely jubbly. We'll round off there then, visuals, and we'll get a nice rumble going. Do you need a refill or anything? Or no, I'm good? good. I've got my shandy. I've got the hard stuff. Oh, it's got shandy. Not the empty. A little glass of brandy. Uh, well, there you go, visuals. There's your canoes news. Go check out Venom, the last dance, if you haven't already. Um, get caught up on all your, your shows, your agathas and stuff. Cause... And, uh, yeah, we'll end it there, visuals. Thank you so much for watching. You guys are the fucking best boys. Keep being here. Keep walking. Keep on. And as always, people, live the life, live the dream, live the life. <laughs>